Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is episode number 37, and we're going to show you how to cheaply and quickly paint up a Demon Prince of Slanesh for Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, or Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And in the end, this whole process is going to cost you $25.77, and that is assuming, of course, that you buy everything on this list for the very first time in order to quickly paint this up. So you can see here, this is the end result that we're having having for our Demon Prince, we'll be painting it up in the colors of the Emperor's Children for Warhammer 40,000, and it also fits very nicely for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, as well as Warhammer Fantasy Battle. So you can see there's a nice, beautiful tabletop standard, and we're going to show you guys how to quickly, as well as cheaply, paint up this Demon Prince. Alright, so the first thing you do, of course, is prime the miniature. In this case, I suggest you use Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. It is the cheapest primer I could find at my local Walmart. Runs at $3.99. You just do a quick once over the entirety of the model. It does a couple of things. First of all, it gives a nice white undercoat for your colors to work off of. It really brightens up the uh, the tone of your color choices for this miniature. At the same time, it also gives a textured surface for which the uh, acrylic paint can actually stick on. If you just paint on acrylic paint to bare plastic, it just slides right off and doesn't stay on. Uh, primer helps with that. That feature. So all you need to do is just do a quick once over some primer and you're ready to move on. All right, so the very next step is we're going to do a base coat real quick. We're going to base coat all the flesh. And as you can see in this photo, there's quite a bit of flesh showing on this Demon Prince. And the color I decided to use was Folk Art Skyline. It's a nice grayish blue color. Runs you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, you just do two thin coats of this stuff all over the flesh. You don't need to be particularly neat at this point. Just need to base coat all the parts that could be flesh, this nice gray color. This bluish, bluish gray color the contrasts very nicely with the magenta that we're using for the armor, as well as the purple accent that we use throughout the miniature as well at the same time add just enough contrast so that way you can tell that there's actually flesh beneath the armor as well so you can see here i just put two thin coats of skyline on and then you're ready to move on to your dry brush all right, so now that we're done with the base coating, the next thing you do is dry brush in order to highlight the elevated portions of the miniature as well. In this case, I use Apple Barrel's Granite Gray is what I use. It's a very light gray that's almost white, and I do a really simple dry brush all over the parts of the flesh that I paint up in Skyline. What this does, it does two things. First of all, it adds some three-dimensionality to your miniature by adding some highlights as well as some darker colors in the recesses. Plus, when you dry brush with uh, Granite Gray, it picks up the highlights as well as the raised surfaces of the miniature. It kind of gives a nice little kind of pastel dusting on the top of it at the same time it keeps that darker skyline color into the recesses of the miniature so that way it picks out a lot of the detail as well now if you notice it does have a chalky and almost pastel appearance when you get done dry brushing don't stress out if you see that in your miniature you're going to have that throughout the entirety of the painting process until you get to the oil wash and once that oil wash starts of course it's going to flatten the colors it's going to smooth out that texturing and it's going to bring all your colors together so once again just do a quick dry brush real quick with uh, granite gray and remember when it comes to dry brushing always start off with a live brush brushing first because you could always add more layers of dry brushing later on but it's very very difficult to take layers off if it gets too bright for you so the next detail we're going to go with now is for all the talons, teeth, claws as well as skulls that adorn this miniature and for that color we're going to do a base coat with khaki Khaki is made by Apple Apparel. It runs about 50 cents at your local Walmart. You just do two thin coats of this stuff on the horns, the teeth, the fangs, the claws, the talons, as well as the skulls and the little skull rack that's on the shoulders of the miniature as well. So whatever elements of this miniature that you want to be done in khaki, just put two thin layers of this and uh, that's going to give you a beautiful bone color result when it's all done. So now that the flesh as well as the bone is done, time for us to work on the armor panels. Now in this case, I decided to use pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs 50 cents your local Walmart, and I did two thin layers of this on all the parts of the armor panel that I wanted to be black. Now I am going for kind of like this divided and two-toned uh, kind of paint scheme. The right hand, the left hand side of the miniature, as you're looking at, the then that's holding the axe. Uh, that left hand side of the miniature is actually going to be the armor is going to be painted magenta color with a bordering of black. So in order to make sure I get that effect, I just painted the entire armor panel black. And the reason why is because the scroll work, which is along the edges of the armor, is very difficult to paint, in my opinion. So because of that, what I like to do is I like to base coat the entirety armor panel in the scroll color and then blot out the individual pieces of the armor panel that are not part of the scroll work in the off color. So that way it makes it a lot easier to paint. And exactly the same thing on the right-hand side as well. The right-hand side is going to be gold with black. And fortunately, there's not much you can do about that, so I decided to paint all those panels black as well. And I'll be highlighting that all in gold as well. So just do two thin layers of pavement and then once you're done with that it's time to dry brush the armor. 
So we'll be doing two dry brushes. The first one will be with Anita's Acrylic Gray that runs a 65 cents to your local Hobby Lobby. Just do a quick dry brushing with that to bring up the raised surfaces. And then we'll do one lighter dry brush using Granite Gray on the left hand side to kind of pick out some of those highlighted details on there. And as you can see from this photo as well, we brought out the scroll work as well as the design elements on the armor panels, uh, both on the thighs, the chest, as well as on the shoulders. So it looks really, really nice and also kind of picks it out very nicely as well. And then once again, like I said, just do a very light dry brushing with Granite and a basic dry brush the gray in order to bring out those details. All right, so with that being done, now it's time to work on to some of the, the smaller elements on the miniature. First of all, we're gonna take care of the loincloth that's just kind of hanging there along the waist of the miniature. I decided to use Concord Gray when I add some purple elements to this. And the reason why is because I thought the purple would be a nice contrasting color to the, both the magenta and black, as well as the gold that we're putting on this miniature. So all I did is just do two thin coats of Concord Grape along that uh, loincloth there, do both the front and the back, and then let it dry. Just a really quick uh, job with that. And as always, the next thing we need to do, of course, is a dry brush. In this case, we'll be using Lilac Mist by Apple Barrel Paint. Runs you 50 cents at your local Walmart. Just do a quick dry brushing real quick, just catching the raised surfaces of the loincloth. What it does is that the Lilac Mist will catch on the edges as well as the raised surfaces while keeping that darker concord grape in the recesses, adding some three-dimensionality as well as some texture to your miniature as well. And then once you're done with that loincloth, it's time for us to go back to the armor panels and start blotting in the details. So here's a close-up of the right hand side, left hand side of the miniature. As you can see, I decided to go with that two-tone paint job like I talked about earlier for the armor panels. So you can see the shoulder on the pad on the left hand side, as well as the left chest plate, as well as the left thigh plate. I picked those out in two thin layers of bright magenta. Bright magenta is a very strong, dark pink color. Uh, basically, in the strong magenta, it's gonna look really, really nice when it's all said and done as well. It's a really good base color to use with that. Contrast is nicely with the black, as well as with the gold as well. Plus, when you add your oil wash on top, it just looks really, really awesome. And very much like something I imagine that the Emperor's children are wearing. So like I said before, you don't need to be particularly neat when you apply this miniature. However, when it comes to the scroll work on the edges on the shoulder pad as well as the thigh pad, um, be careful when you get towards the armor panels are going to be black because like I said, I want to edge those into black. So just make sure you be extra careful and don't spill over. If you do spill over into those armor panels, just neaten up with a little bit of pavement from Apple Barrel and that would definitely do the trick. And so the last thing to do for those armor panels on the left hand side is to use some cameo pink in order to do a dry brush. The dry brushing does a couple things. First of all, it kind of leaves that magenta and the recessed areas as well as catching the highlights on these armor panels as well. So all I do is I just took a simple paintbrush, dipped it in my cameo pink and then dry brushed it accordingly. And as you can see, it did a really awesome job on that, le uh, that left poultry. And as you can see, there's kind of like a eight pointed star right there in the center while I left the magenta alone in the recesses. Same thing with the arm grief right there on the left hand side arm as well. Also took care of that in order to bring out those details as well. So with the armor panel taken care of, now we need to go to the finer details in this miniature. In this case, we'll be focusing on the eyes as well as the cabling that kind of scrolls around the body. Uh, first of all, for the eyes, I use Winter, Gr uh, Winter Green by Apple Barrel Paint. Runs at 50 cents, a nice minty green. Just put a dollop of that on both of the eyes. Make a look at the eyes are glowing a sinister green. And if you also notice the miniature, there's also a lot of bit of cabling running through the body as well. It's supposed to represent like the power cables that are in Space Marine power armor that's kind of melded with the flesh of this creature. So because of that, I picked those details out using Kiwi by Apple Barrel. Also runs 50 cents as well. It's a beautiful yellowish greenish color. Looks like it's kind of glowing as well. So there's some cabling along the abdomen of the Demon Prince as well as along its neck as well as some of its arms as well as it kind of goes from the chest all the way out to the uh, pauldrons there on the, on, the, on the shoulder areas. So just do two thin layers of Kiwi as well as enter green and then you're ready to move on for the next details. All right, so the next detail we're gonna work on next is the Chaos Arrows. So if you look here on the pauldron here on the right-hand side of the miniature, you see there's like this nice little point that's kind of like carved into the shoulder panel. Uh, these kind of recessed details are all over the armor panels of the miniature as well. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to kind of pick those details out with Tahishi Blue by uh, Delta Serum Coat Paints. Uh, that runs about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. It's a nice kind of glowing um, turquoise color. I thought it looked like a really cool idea to just add that to the recessed portions of the armor panel. There's a lot of these kind of arrows sculpted into the armor panels throughout the demon print, so I just put two thin layers of that to make it look like the armor panel is glowing with this inner blue eerie light and make it look really cool at the same time. So just find those arrows that you want to take those recesses at, just put two thin layers on that and you're ready to move on. All right, so well, the detail work done, now it's time for us to work on the metallics. In this case, I decided to use gunmetal gray for the parts that are gonna be silver on this miniature. So the first thing I decided to do is put, of course, on the blade of the ax that he's carrying to make it look like it's really cool and powerful. Same thing with the vent that's on the bottom of the power fist on the left-hand side of the Malefic Talon. And also I did this on the skull rack that's on the back of the miniature, and uh, as well as the little uh, pieces of metal stuck to the horns as well. So I just did two thin layers of gunmetal gray from Folk Art. You can get that at your local Hobby Lobby for 75 
makes sense. Does a beautiful job bringing a nice dark metallic color. And of course, just two thin layers of that will definitely do the trick on that part. And uh, I will have mentioned this earlier. If you notice this picture, there's some of the, the spines of the skull rack. You'll notice that's on his shoulders there. Um, later on, you'll notice that this miniature does not have those skull racks on his back any longer. And if you're wondering what the case that is the case, the reason why is because when I was painting this miniature, I accidentally dropped it on its head right on the back of the shoulders, which is a horrible place to drop the miniature because uh, those uh, skull rack spines are like very spindly and very thin. And I just snapped them when it dropped it. When I dropped it, it was absolutely horrible. Like all those major spines either snapped off or been really bad and I couldn't fix it. So I decided to do is trim them off the shoulders because uh, you know, there was no way I could repair it. So if you see later slides of that going on, uh, that's why. So the next step we need to do, of course, is do another base coat of metallic paint. This time using Folk Arts Copper. Runs a 65, 75 cents local Hobby Lobby. And what I used this for was on the shaft of the uh, axe there. So you can see that I just painted two thin layers of that. I also put a little thin layer of uh, copper right there on the chest plate of the uh, Demon Prince. There's like this little weird little ventilator right there on the chest. I just picked that out as well to add a nice, nice sharp contrasting color. And uh, that's all you need to do. Just find the parts that you want to be copper. Pick those out two thin layers of copper paint. And the very last metallic color you're going to use, of course, is gold. You're going to use pure gold by Folk Art. You're going to use two thin layers of this stuff, and all the elements are going to be gold. So things like the uh, bracketing along the top of the power axe, the uh, claw, uh, the little talon there that's on the hand holding the power axe, as well as the edge scroll work of the black armor panels. Pick those out in gold. So you can see the pulgin there on the right-hand side, as well as the uh, power fist, the malefic talon, as well as the thigh pad, as well as along the collarbone as well. There's also a couple of, like, arrows and lightning bolt patterns of ruins stuck into the flesh of the uh, Demon Prince as well, and I picked those out also. And if you notice on the top, you notice the skull racks are gone. That's the reason why, is because after I got done painting the copper pieces, I accidentally knocked the miniature off the table, it fell to the floor head first, and just snapped those, uh, those, uh, those, uh, uh, skull rack pieces so I just kind of trimmed those down and just moved on and that really broke my heart because those spines looked really really cool but you know them is the breaks I guess when it comes to miniature painting but anyways so once you do that just pick out two thin layers for your pure gold for all the parts are gonna be gold and once you're done with that you are all completed with your miniature now it's time to move on to the oil wash all right, so the next uh, step is an oil wash. In this case, we'd use Minwax Poly Shades Mission Oak, and the reason why we're using that product is because this is a quick paint method, and usually a quick paint method, people like to use Army Painter Strong Tone in order to do their oil wash. The problem is that stuff runs $32 per can, whereas Minwax Poly Shades runs you about $7 to local Walmart. So all I need to do, of course, is just take that and just apply it like a wash all over the entirety of the miniature. What ends up happening is that the poly shades will go directly into the recesses, bring out a lot of the details into the miniature, so you can see the texturing, as well as the full increases the skin the cracks and the armor panels brings all those details out at the same time it also blends in your dry brushing your base coating together to make it look like the dry brushing is look like highlights on your miniature at the same time it also flattens out the miniature in terms of the texture smooths out the texturing on it at the same time also dulls down your colors a little bit to make it look more realistic and not as bright and as you can see that is a really awesome job and it gives a really awesome look when it's all washed up with the oil wash now I do recommend you wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry as well as cure and the reason why that is the case is because if you work on the miniature when it's not completely dry and cured, it'll have a sticky consistency. And if you're not careful, if you put like a thumb on it or something like that and you move your thumb, you could take off a whole layer and chunk of paint off and then it'll just screw up the finish of your miniature. So trust me when I say this, let it dry for 24 hours as well. I usually paint in the evening. So what I do is that one day when I get to this stage, I do the oil wash leave it alone, let it dry and cure all day the next day, and then the next evening, pick off where I left off. And that's exactly what you should do as well. So the next step, of course, is a quick spray varnish. This part is also optional as well. Um, if you like that shine that's on it or the sheen that's on it after it gets done with that caddy coating sheen, you can skip this face. However, I like to use the matte varnish because I like to have that, that shine on it to be muted down so that we can see all the details. So for this, I use Krylon Matte Finish. It's a spray varnish that I get my local Walmart for, three, uh, for $5.99. Just do a once over real quick. As you can see there, you can see all the detail work, all of the texturing, as well as the highlighting and the painting. It looks just absolutely fantastic when it's all set in done a beautiful tabletop standard really really quickly 
So the next up, of course, is to do a base coat this time on the base. As you can see, there, I got my base there I have with my typical sand and wood glue mixture for the texturing on that. And all I do is I put two thin layers of Concar grape. It runs a 50 cents at local Walmart. Just put two thin coats on the texturing on that because I'm going to try to create this realm of chaos warp zone kind of weird effect. And this is the color scheme I came up in order to create that uh, demonic landscape, like something out of the Pleasure Palace, uh, Slanesh. So just do two thin layers of the Concar grape and you're ready to move on to a dry brush. And as you can see, the dry brush color I use is uh, Granite Gray by Apple Barrel Paint. It's the same one that we used earlier to dry brush the flesh. Just do a quick dry brushing with this onto the base to give it kind of like this ashy gray, purplish, burnt earth type of texture. So just put two, th just do a real thin layer of dry brushing on top of that and you'll be ready to go. And lastly, the next thing you do, of course, is rim the base of the miniature, which it stands on. In this case, I use gray by Anita's acrylic. I just put two thin layers of that gray along the base work in order to help kind of create that finished look on it as well. Gray is a nice neutral color that goes very nicely with the purple as well as the pink and the rest of the color scheme for this miniature. It also blends with the rest of the army that this miniature will belong to as well. Remember, whenever you work on bases for an army, make sure all your base work is exactly the same for all the miniatures. So that way it creates a unit coherency. So once you're done with that, rimming of the base you're pretty much done with the miniature and there you have it ladies and gentlemen this is the end result of the miniature as you can see it looks really awesome it's painted up in the color scheme of the emperor's children at the same time it can also be used for the black legion if you wanted to for 140,000. or in this case like i'm using it i'm using it for our fantasy battle and it looks exactly what it should look like all awesome and as well as ready to just bring the pain onto the battlefield of the old world so now that we're done of course picking out the miniature the uh, telling you about how to paint it real quick what we're gonna do now is talk about exactly how much this miniature would cost to do exactly the same techniques if you're to purchase games work shop sit a line of paints as well as army painter to do it so we're gonna give you a real run quick run down real quick of all the materials that you would need from those brands in order to paint this up talk about the grand total and talk about the amount that we save you by doing it the cheapskate way so this is the Citadel method, it's using Citadel paint as well as Army Painter. First of all, you need to buy a can of Corax White Spray, which is $17 in order to prime the miniature. You will then need to base coat all the flesh in rust gray, and then dry brush that flesh with Ultimon gray, both of which runs you $4.55. For all the claws, talons, horns, and fangs, you'll need to use more gas bone, which is $4.55 for that. And then for the black armor panels, you need to paint that up in Eshin gray, and then dry brush that with Slanesh gray, which runs you $4.55 as well. Now, in order to do the loin cloth, you need to base coat that that for Gene Stealer Purple, and then dry brush it with the color Lilac, both of which were on 455. You'll also use that Gene Stealer Purple onto the base as well, and as well as using the Slanesh Gray to dry brush it. Now, once you're done with that, of course, the next thing you do, of course, is paint up the armor panels in Screamer Pink, and then dry brush with Emperor's Children. Both those paints run you $4.55 as well. For the details on the eyes, you'll need to use Gauss Blaster Green, which runs you $4.55, and then Moot Green for all the tubing as well as power cabling throughout the body, that runs you $4.55 as well. Now, for the highlights that you did for the recess, arrow portions of the armor panel get that glowing blue effect you'll need to buy a pot of Baharoth blue runs at four dollars 55 cents for that as well now for the metallic paints for all the parts that could be silver you need to buy lead belcher for all the uh, scroll work that's going to be in gold you need to buy retributor armor and for all the parts you did in copper you'll need to buy a screaming bell each one of those runs at seven dollars 80 per can as well and then lastly of course you'll need to buy a can of army painter strong tone which is 32 dollars to do the quick paint method for this and let it dry and cure and then to of course do that matte finish and you buy a can of Minotaurian varnish runs you $19.50. In the end, the grand total if you were to buy everything on this list for the very first time runs you $146.50 to paint this way. Now when you take that $146.50 from the Citadel method and then you subtract the $25.77 from the Cheapskate method, you're talking about a grand total savings of $120.73 which you could use to buy miniatures or better yet not spend it at all and just save it for something else instead. So that's you have it ladies and gentlemen this is how you guys quickly as well as cheaply paint up a demon prince of slanesh and the colors of the emperor's children while saving you over 120 dollars at the same time so as always you guys please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is valuable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to our channel that's good for this one you guys we'll catch you guys next one peace out and stay classy